This week we're talking one of my favourite areas of business, marketing. Marketing has probably seen the biggest and fastest change in how consumers connect with business. Where do you begin? So for the next 20 minutes, I'm meeting some of the best marketing minds in the country to get you some great tips and insights to help you navigate this marketing minefield. So Nishma, you are the marketing director at Google. You must see all the trends coming through. So what, what's the latest one that you're seeing for marketing? So the biggest trend is about making sure that you can be where the customers are. Most, yep. we're seeing a significant increase in consumer behavior on mobile. It's at the heart of our lives. It's where we kind of sadly wake up and probably go to bed still looking at that screen. So making sure that you can be found and be seen on mobile. So whether that's through search or through your mobile site, making sure it's easy to use is key. So we see a lot of people focusing in terms of marketing efforts there. Video is huge now. And so in terms of video being people using video to tell stories, to share more information about their products, be able to get their brand across, as well as kind of give more of a sense of what they do and their personality is a big part of people's plans. And then I would actually say data. So actually having a better understanding of who your consumers are and what they're doing. And the way that that turns up in marketing is by being relevant. Mm -hmm. So whether that's through local, so we see a lot of a huge increase in local searches through search. So people, we still see most consumer journeys, everything starts with a search. So if that's where they're starting, and particularly if they're looking for local. So previously, people may say hairdressers or hairdressers in Rygate. Actually, they'll now just say hairdressers near me. And that sense is they believe that there should be an understanding of what is in the locality. So being able to have, and, and this is free for any business, and actually we've just had a, um, a, an initiative, and it's still out at the moment, where we're trying to look at market traders and market towns, because it really is a universal opportunity, that a business needs to just register themselves so that they appear in Google search, so when someone searches, they can be found. Great, because that's a big issue, isn't it? Being found and getting your name into the Google search and up there with the rest of them. Now, now you're the MD of Zenith Media. So, I mean, you look after some really significant big global brands pulling together their marketing plans. If you're a small or medium-sized business, what would you give the first piece of advice on starting to even pull together how do I market to a, a massive consumer base with um, so many different touch points? I would say it's really important to be clear on the difference between your business objectives your marketing objectives that fall out of that, and then what you're expecting communications to contribute to those two things. Because quite a lot of businesses, even the big ones, that some of the big ones we work with, get all those three things a bit mixed up. And then it's quite difficult for the agency to unpick it and work out what the role of communication should be in what they're trying to do. And you've not had much money starting up Temple. I guess you didn't start with anything. You had a vision, you had an idea with your company, Temple Bicycles, and you've grown it completely organically. Mm -hmm. I guess a lot of it in the first instance was guesswork. Yeah. How, how did you start and what were the most powerful tools that you used in connecting your brand idea to, to your consumers? Um, the most powerful tools to start with were definitely things like pop-up shops, really allowed us to... Right from the beginning? Right from the shops. beginning, yeah. One of the first things we did was a pop-up shop straight away showing the product to people and building up a community and meeting customers and creating a bit of a buzz, or as much of a buzz we could um, with pop-up shops. Find a nice location, get the bikes looking nice, make a nice window display. So you went right into the heart of the community straight yeah. away? Yeah, yeah. Straight away. Okay, as a business grows, if you've got any questions on marketing strategies, please, please get onto the spotlight hashtag and we will answer your questions. Now, how do you decide on what marketing strategies are right? Um, so I think one. I mean, it's a tough one today. Yeah. I mean, just historically, we used to have advertising. Yes. Yeah. Is that right? Where we are today, it's a mind blast, isn't it? How do you pick the right one? I think once you've helped the client nail the role of communications, what it is you're expecting from advertising or comms, um, it tends to fall out from that fairly easily so yeah. are you expecting your media budget to reach lots of people once or twice 
and just give them quite a straight message? Or are you wanting to use that budget to get a load of people to advocate your brand to a load of other people? Or whatever it is you're trying to do, choosing the right approach does should fall out of that fairly straightforwardly. And there's often you know, a number of different routes you could take. And the most important thing is to use data and insight and experience to identify the route that you believe in and then help the client to throw everything at that route and really make it work in the execution. And if we're being on the inside of the digital revolution, right at the spearhead at the front of it, what do businesses need to do to get to make sure they've got visibility on Google? The most simple things. Mm. Well, there's a couple of and they're free resources. So there's, there's two things. One is around... Free, all of them free. free. You think the, free. No, no because this is really important. Yeah, Most people is. think, oh, God, I'm going to have to spend well, a fortune to get myself through the, yeah. you know, the SEO. And you're saying it's free. Well, the first stage is free. The first okay. is like being visible, as I said, that, that simple yeah. search to make sure you appear. And, and what that is, not just the simple listings. You often see when you do a search page on the left-hand side, you have a slightly more expanded kind of what we would call a card there that provides a little bit more information around um, your business. In that, you can increase, the, you, can, you can add additional information. So you could put, for example, the opening hours. If you have a particular, um, something that you're trying to push or a special offer or something in there. And those things are kind of expanding your listing in there. It's something we call Google My Business. So you can Google it, you can go and find it and make sure your business is registered. So at least at that point when someone's searching, nowadays, again, what we see is a complete evolution in the way that people search. They want so much more. We're so much more demanding as consumers. Yeah. So we don't necessarily just want to find where a business is. We know, is it open? Yeah. Can it deliver to me? What's, you know, how can what I quickly get in touch with it? You exactly. Know, really is there a phone simple, number? Yeah. Is there a website? So often it's so a case of basics. just sort of thinking about what you want as yeah. a consumer. That's what I said to somebody, just think about think what as you a consumer. want. And speed, speed yeah. at the heart of it. And then the next stage is around, obviously, it is around using media, it is used around money to see how can you elevate your presence. And there's many ways of doing that. So we have AdWords, which is the most simple way of making sure that your ad appears against the words that people search against. Mm -hmm. And that can be small budgets to large budgets, really depending on what you're trying to do. But I always say, before you jump into advertising, make sure you have the basics. So you have that listing. You have a mobile site, you know, a site that can be viewed on a mobile screen. And that you have a... And many don't. Many don't. Many have that don't. don't. Okay. So so even large site. businesses... Do you have one, Matt? Yeah, we, okay. we've got a responsive because site. Because you, in a crowded market, went in with a new business, didn't you? And you've broken through. What, what do you think was the most important thing you did, besides your pop-ups? Um, besides the pop-ups, um, our, our product really speaks volumes. It well, doesn't sell itself, but we have a really good product. We spent years and years... Well, not years and years, but a couple of years developing, prototyping, getting it really nailed down. Um, so it was about telling your product story as well, I guess. Telling product story, and we use videos a lot to do that. Mm -hmm. Only about in the last year, a lot, a lot of videos to do that to really showcase a product, show them being used as well, so people can relate to that and see how they could be, you know, pitch themselves. Well, how, how did bikes. you know that video content would be the right marketing strategy? Well, because that's the, a lot of time on video content, and some can yeah. be pretty boring. Well, I think. In the bicycle industry, a lot of the other bicycle brands aren't doing so much video content. There's plenty of videos about bikes online, but not from bike brands. Um, so we kind of felt we could make a bit of a headway there and kind of stand out. So that's why we focused on it for, for, about, for about a year, yeah. And, and I'm reading that the average consumer watches something like an hour and a half of online video content. So what do businesses need to think about when they're making that sort of content, That. Because there's a lot of content being thrown up, isn't there? Either? Yeah, there's a lot of content out there that should not have been made. <laughs> um, and uh, I think so. a lot of the same rules that apply to TV advertising apply to video content as well. And, and obviously there's different types, but... Um, and where do you put it to be noticed? And where, where, where's the most important place to put it? It depends who you're going after. Um, and I think video is not a case of when and where necessarily, but if, because quite a lot of our clients, when we talk about content, want to rush off and make video content. Yeah. And sometimes they don't know why to. they're even doing it. Oh, they don't know why they don't even need to. Yeah. So, because really, um, the internet should be about answering people's questions, because really people use it a lot of the time to, answer, to get a question answered in some way. And do you do that, Matt? Though? I mean, where do you put your video content? Um, so, our website is 
our shop front basically at all times. So we put the videos directly on the website. So when people are looking at a landing page for a particular product like a bicycle, there's a video to go along with it so they can see it if they're interested in the product. We also host it on YouTube and Vimeo, but we mainly focus on embedding it in our website. Because looking at this, 76% of marketers revealed video has helped increase sales. How do you measure that success? Or are they just sort of, I mean, how, are they really measuring that? Or are they thinking that it's really increased sales? Well, I think, you know, video or is the on thing to do, you know? Yeah, well, I think video on YouTube obviously has the, it has the same analytics, as we call it, that you can have behind your website. So you can track the performance of your video, and particularly if that then leads to someone coming to your site or actually even be able to purchase. So what we find, I think you're absolutely right in terms of people using video to, is another way of enhancing the questions you ask. So I always encourage brands to say, you know, think about the old FAQs, you know, it's a great way to be able to answer <coughs> questions through video. I think brand storytelling, so getting a sense of your purpose and who yeah. you are. But people can find that, and it's about where they go on to afterwards. The beautiful thing about digital, it is trackable. So you can see that yeah. the journey and where right. they end up. Right. And it's changing so quickly, isn't it, all this stuff? I mean, you've got to be on top of it. But mm -hmm. what's anything that you see coming through that's the next exciting thing, that's exciting you? You're smiling at me already. What is your one? Um, what do you think in marketing terms that you're seeing that's going to be the new thing? Well, Give you a bit of a competitive edge. I, I think for us, so we have one Instagram account at the moment. We're going to open another one, which is just for purely behind the scenes workshop stuff so they can see stuff being made. Maybe people can even tune in to watch their bike being made for them. Nice that idea, sort of thing. I like that. Yeah. They'd have to have a lot of time sitting watching their bike being made. <laughs> might, might not be right for me, but I'm sure it's right for a lot of geeky bike guys. No, no offence there. <laughs> and what about, what do you think is going to be the future, the trends that you're seeing coming through It's going to be a really good thing um, in marketing? From... Uh, advertisers and marketers point of view I think it will be um, recognizing people as individuals in a digital space so media and advertising is always meant to be about right message right time right place um, and I think digital gives the opportunity to do right person right message right time right place um, and being able to recognize the that person over there is the same as that person over there and the same as that person over there so that you can start to recognize people not cookies yeah and I mean, I, that's coming down the road i think that you said yeah, definitely yeah. ahead of time but you've seen a lot of campaigns well, is there any stuff that you've seen oh that's really exciting that's unique that's clever yeah and i and i think from actually a whole range of business i actually think some of the most exciting campaigns i see out of smaller businesses yeah so there was a uh, um actually robinson's brewery who recently did a, a very small campaign on YouTube but with huge impact and effect, uh, creating awareness of the brand, which was, you know, had a huge heritage there, but it was hard for them to convey in the stories they had and create awareness of where people could find their product. And it's just that really simple storytelling yeah. done in a really clever way. That's not a big budget. It was a very, very small budget, actually. And even the authenticity of the way they filmed it, I think the beauty of something like YouTube, actually, you don't need lots of production, you can do it quite simply off your phone. Well, this is what I'm just saying, because one of the Telegraph readers, you know, wrote in and said, in, a, in a, you know, a, a saturated market of social media, how do you stand up? Well, you've kind of said it there, it's about a simple truth, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a huge spend, but it has to be, which I guess you've done with your bikes as well. It's about a simple, honest truth that's interesting at the heart of it. Yes. Yes? And it's that, it's to your point, it's that understanding Having that sense of what do your customers want? What are they looking for? Yeah. And give that to them. Yeah. I always think, you know, that, that closer that we come and smarter we are with that, the better. And is social media the most cost effective way, do you think, now to market a business? Uh, no, I personally think if you can get your search right, um, yeah. that's the most important so thing. So search, number one, you would yeah, think. Yeah, and is social is, is becoming more and more important at every stage of the funnel. Um, you know, it's, it's great as a reach driver and it's also great for converting at the bottom of the funnel as well. I'm always stunned by how fashion brands now, quite small ones, can do so well yeah. selling through yeah. Facebook. And there's loads of fashion brands now that I have got really great clothes from. And I should never have heard of them, really. No, I'm exactly the same. Mm. Ridiculous, really ridiculous, ridiculous amount. And they've got that yeah. through social media, particularly through Facebook. So looking to 2019, where do you think the number one priority would be for social media marketing budgets? 
for, I think for social, it's about video, video yeah. creation, and then think about where you put that. YouTube and, and that sense of attention, or General marketing Facebook budget. or Instagram. General, I would still stand by search. You know, I think everything starts with a search. They then may end up on a website or a social media site or a video, but actually you've got to get search right first. So I'm hearing a lot though, this is about digital, digital, digital. What about mm. the other forms of, of yeah. advertising? How, how much, how, what percentage of your clients are still using that? And how important oh. is it? Uh, loads of them are still using it. I mean, if you want to, because marketing generally is about reaching lots of people with a message they haven't heard before quickly. And there's still nothing like TV for reaching 60% of the yeah, population yeah. in four weeks. You know, nothing else can and do that. And what you said earlier, talking about the market, when you're, when you're targeting a market, know which percentage that you want to go after and what sort of messages. But how important is it to still speak to your regular customers rather mm. than you're nodding away there, as yeah. well as trying to search for yeah, more? It's a funny um, one because um, a lot of the empirical studies out there show that you are much more likely to make money and grow by targeting as many people as possible and getting new people in and there's quite a few famous studies on it that have said if you try and go after your current set and get them to buy more often you're more likely to fail and if you go after more people broaden the net you'll kind of do that anyway so I'm always erring on the side of Try and the don't way. limit yourself. Don't limit yourself. But you, you, you were you were smiling at that. Do you yeah. go after you? I mean, I guess well, with bikes, you know, once you've got one and you, you'll know your customer, they're probably more likely to buy extra bits exactly, for it. Exactly, yeah. Or, one or for, upgrade. Yeah, or one for a friend or family member. So how, how often do you target existing? All the time. So basically, I feel that people are getting bombarded with social media content all the time. So you don't get much time to, much attention from the person, maybe a few seconds here and there, a video maybe a bit longer. So we have a Temple Journal, which is basically a monthly newsletter, just simple email marketing, essentially. Uh, but it tells a story, it links to blog posts, it's interesting behind the scenes, news and events. And it's really like, a, uh, we encourage contributions from customers as well. We're trying to build up a community. Yours is a community. And, yeah. that, and that works. I guess that it is really down works. to each individual brand. But, and you know, you talked about data. Mm -hmm. And it's quite difficult for SMEs analysing data. How would you advise them to do that? Um, I think there's a lot, there's basic data. I don't think it's about, you know, um, vast quantities. To your point, actually, you know who your customers are. Mm. You may have a sense of, you know, with their permission, if you have gathered data and you have the permission to use that in a way to keep in touch with them. So how do you make it relevant, that data to so your So that customers? data can then, um, it, whether it's through your email marketing or even into search, actually you can load that into search and find a smart way of being able to target people right. through that. Right. I think the other key thing with, with data is, it's, there is so much more you can do with it. It's about the knowledge. Mm. And I think the hardest thing for SMEs particularly, or anyone actually, is that digital skills because things yeah. are moving at such a yeah. pace. Mm. Yeah. So that skills training, and, and um, we provide free skills training. We have a, uh, what we call a, a garage or a shop in Manchester. We, we're doing this coastal towns tour. But actually within that, we talk to individuals and businesses about all different types of media. So not just Google, you can learn about Facebook and traditional media as well. And at the heart of that is saying, what do you want to know? What do you need to know about somebody? And what do you think they'd like to know from you? And then how can you use media to tell that story? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And if you want to know more about marketing, head to the NatWest Business Hub for tips, advice and insight. Thanks, Matt. Uh, good luck with Temple Cycles. I'll be following your videos. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Nat and Mishma are staying with me because we'll continue to talk marketing today with another market disruptor who shook up the popcorn market with proper corn. Founder Cassandra Stavu joins us in a moment to reveal how she turned a very basic snack into a multi-million pound empire, a masterclass in marketing. And here's a clip from one of our many marketing videos worth watching on the Business Hub featuring Stephen Chelyotis, CEO at the Centre for Brand Analytics on the basics of being a brand. Brand is a term that is used by so many people so often, but actually it's often misused. Often people think it's just about the brand name or it's about the logo and the colors. If you think about brand as being reputation, then you've got no choice. People are gonna have a perception of your business. Brand is not an opt-in. You need to own brand. You need to understand how you can make your business really stand out and really desirable compared to the competitors. So more of those videos on the NatWest Business Hub. 
Um, so Cassandra has joined me from her company Propercorn. Propercorn, yes? Yeah. That's so right. um, you, a real marketing success story. I mean, when you went into the, the, the business, were there many popcorn businesses already up and, and running? And um, how did you disrupt the market? How did you grow? So there, there was popcorn in the traditional sense, the cinema kind of popcorn. The, only, only that so far? Yeah, it wasn't pretty, in all pretty the Pretty much. Or the more kind of, I guess, um, indulgent popcorn that you have as a, you know, naughty snack. Um, I guess the idea came about, uh, I guess, you know, three o'clock seeing everyone's sort of have their lunch and then either um, you know fancy something like chocolate and feeling really guilty after yeah, the dip, it or, we all do that or having a rice cake and feeling really unsatisfied and having a chocolate bar anyway so wanted to create a snack that was uh, really satisfying full of flavor but also didn't make you feel guilty so was that what you would say was a differentiation that became more desirable than the competitors yeah the, the biggest challenge that we faced when we launched was how do you reposition something so how do you reposition popcorn away from cinema, away from kind of that movie traditional moment um, as a healthier snack. Uh, and so... And how much of that would you say is down to marketing? I guess it's, it depends how you... Um, well, what did you do? What was your first thing you did? I think, I think the, one of the best things we did was um, we saw our sales as our most powerful marketing tool. So our distribution. So. Um, in terms of repositioning a product, just trying to get our popcorn in meal deals, getting it on the high street, getting it into those kind of quick serve restaurants that you see up and down the country, um, you know, the pret style, th that helps to sort of shift popcorn away from cinema into something that you'd have with your sandwich or have as a snack at work. And what about digital um, marketing? Was that important to you? Because we've heard so much about that. I think, I think it's important. Um, I would say that, you know, m my product is an impulse product. And so while digital marketing is a really uh, effective tool in driving awareness in lots of ways, um, it's never going to be as valuable as our sales. And so, um, you know, a disproportionate amount of effort um, uh, goes into just driving our distribution and making sure that you can see our product um, as, yeah. in as many places as possible. Okay, okay. Um, it's as visible as possible. Um, so new doors opening for you are about your sales. So you yeah, go to absolutely. retailers and they go, well, where have you sold the best? And that, that's the most powerful bit. It's, but you must be at the same time looking at your marketing plans all the time and looking at you know, where you get the best sort of bang for, for it. I mean, are you doing that all the time? Absolutely. And I think um, it depends on who you're trying to market to. So there's obviously your consumers. But... Um, you know, I guess it's thinking about the entire chain of your business. And so uh, something that served us really well was marketing to the people who load the shelves in the supermarkets. So um, if you think about everything... Telling them about it. Yeah. Every, telling every, about why this popcorn's great. Exactly. Every product in the country um, is shipped up and down the country in brown cardboard boxes. And quite often, if you're a new product, you can get forgotten about in that storeroom. And the person who's loading the shelves might not know to put you on the shelf. Now, that makes such a big difference. Um, and so the design of the packaging the, the, must be very important to that for standout so as well. So we made Would our you... brown cardboard boxes really bright and colourful yeah. and look like yeah. proper luggage yeah. so that we weren't forgotten about in the storeroom anymore. And I, I would say that's a form of marketing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just marketing to a different type of audience. And this, I hear that the Google team like the popcorn. Oh, it's it. it's one of the best selling in your Google cafe. Yeah. Well, um, we uh, <laughs> they don't pay Google's for rather in <laughs> so they they don't don't that, that, Right, there we go. So you, don't, you put it into Google free of charge. No, 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 no so they, they don't, staff they don't, don't pay. Well, the staff don't, don't pay. pay. Oh, right, well, you yeah. do then. Oh, OK. Yeah. yeah. But I that, I think that, the idea. that often happens, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Did you do that? Did you put it into businesses free of charge for a bit? Uh, yeah, we did, and, and, and Google was our first customer, and actually I would, you know, I would give that advice to um, anyone starting out, is think about the, the kind of, I guess, the credibility of your first yeah, the customer. associated partnership. Yeah, we were able to sort of, you know, tart that around the industry and say, you know, go Google... Tarting around is yeah. a very good thing, yeah, we, isn't it? I you mean, know, we're the fastest really selling snack in, uh, yeah, fastest yeah. moving snack in Google, and that was an amazing... That gave us credibility as a new business. And making it look good is important as well. I mean, yeah. in Google, I'm sure they want something that's beautifully packaged and looks they great. Do. So also, isn't it? I mean, it's important. Well, it was. I was, I was actually saying to Sandra, it's the, there was a bit of a rush mm. for the... A, the product is Thank wonderful you. tasting and <laughs> appeals to that healthy snack, but it looked beautiful. Yeah, that's and important. And that's a big part. You know, and trying to stand out. In 
Instagram would be important as well, I guess. Is it for you? Um, yeah, it is. I think because because we are um, really obsessed with you know the, the way our packaging looks and making it look as beautiful as possible, and we work with lots of different artists and illustrators to continue to make it look great. So Instagram is a brilliant window for us to show that. Um, and I guess you can be quite targeted and a bit more um, effective with your spend if you're a smaller business with channels like Instagram. And Matt, if we've got people watching who are looking to go into it at the market and then disrupt and, and uh, you know, mm. like you've done with, Cassandra's done with Popcorn, what would you say would be the first thing they should be doing? Um, <clears throat> I think I borrowing that's a big from, question. Yeah. It depends on what the, the product is. Borrowing from yeah. other categories is always quite yeah. a good start. Stealing ideas, point. basically. Um, but from other <laughs> categories, is it quite important? So, oh, right, yes. You know, if there's a way that. So, not necessarily within your industry yeah. of food, you might just say, look, yeah. you've done it brilliantly on hair care. Or, exactly, yeah. yeah. So, if you take um, cosmetics, mm -hmm. you know, it used to be the way that unless you were a cosmetics giant, you, yeah. you, you had no you, Your mascara's mm -hmm. got no chance. And now, there are so many different ways social and, and, and Google and Facebook have helped mm. small businesses massively, I think. Um, uh, so many different ways now to get, you know, those products that you shouldn't have heard of out in front of people like consumers like us. Um, so we always encourage clients to look at other categories and the rules of those categories and see if they can borrow them for theirs because I th it's yes, I really difficult really to not just follow the way that the it's always coast. been done because it's really hard to do that and an, a quick easy way to try and break out of that is to take five or six sort of related worlds or totally unrelated worlds and look at how they do it. That's a really, really good mm. piece of advice. I, I, I often say it to people, but you know, hearing it said like that, it's true. You often look at other categories and you see, God, they did that in that way. How mm. can I put that into mm. mine? And it's a surprise. It can be a surprise. Yeah. Cassandra, for you, what would be, you know, talking to SMEs, anyone else mm. starting up, what would you say the one piece of most important piece of marketing that you did in, in getting your product noticed? Yeah, I mean, I think that's actually brilliant advice and something that we, we, we've always done is kind of look at what's happening in the arts or fashion or yeah. beauty even um, and sort of borrow the bits that work for your business and that continues to kind of keep you fresh and I think um, just stay really restless. I think the great thing yeah. about today is that the barriers to entry are quite low and there's so much innovation and exciting kind of new startups entering but that means you know my god you 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 cannot take your foot off the pedal yeah. you have to sort of stay restless and and um don't have any arrogance i think a lot of brands sort of just assume people want to hear what they've got to say mm -hmm. and actually people are really busy mm -hmm. and have got better things to be doing with their lives so just offer value and keep challenging yourself to be interesting and offer like brilliant products i think you know, don't, don't get arrogant, don't get caught up in your own bubble. And would you think, though, you know, looking at today, I mean, the, the digital revolution that's happened, do you think you could have done this, say, 20 years ago? Um, I guess I'm slightly different in that because it's such an impulse product and it's quite a traditional business in many ways. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. I think digital's been brilliant in driving kind of awareness of the brand, but I think for, for, for luxury brands and, and different types of business, it's perhaps even more valuable i think as we continue to expand internationally and, and and things and look at new markets i think it will play an even more important role for us so live questions coming in one from james mcnulty how much time stroke money should i invest in influencer marketing um i think influencers have almost got to a point where they could sort of fall away as a, as a key channel because people have become wise to the fact that influencers are often paid by multiple brands to, to talk about those brands yeah and i think a bit of credibility has been lost i agree in that space yeah, yeah. um and a, a lot of it i think even in, it's getting the right influencers yeah. isn't it? with an integrity at the heart of it so you possibly putting your popcorn for free in one business that you think is going to make a huge impact. That's kind of using influencer, yeah. but not necessarily in the overt way of doing yeah, so. So I think it needs to be about yeah, cleverer ways to um, 
use people who genuinely have an interest in your product yeah. Yeah. to talk about that product elsewhere. And that's what it should be. And it's now become pay this person and that person to be one of a number of things on a rotor of stuff they talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can see through that. Yeah. You can see through it as a mm. consumer. Really, really interesting. Well, if you want to know more about marketing, there's loads of information, tips and insights available on the NatWest Business Hub. Thank you very much for coming Thank today. You. Thank you. Really interesting. Uh, we're here every Wednesday at 1 p.m. until July 4th on the NatWest Business Hub and The Telegraph online. Watch us live and interact with us or catch up whenever you can. With international trading opportunities opening up, next Wednesday we're talking export. Thank you. Thank you. Interesting.